Chapter nine, one shoe. Zoe quickly put Armitage back in her blazer pocket. I'm just having a wee, said Zoe. Then she made a rather pitiful sound that she hoped would sound like water gushing into a bowl by pursing her lips and blowing. It ended up sounding more like a snake hissing. Of course, Zoe's hope was that this would convince Tina Trotz that she was using the toilet for legitimate purposes only and not for feeding a bread sandwich to a long-tailed rodent. Zoe then took a deep breath and opened the toilet door. Tina stared down at Zoe, two of her usual goons flanking her. Hello, Tina, said Zoe in a voice quite a few octaves higher than her usual one. In attempting to play the innocent, she felt like she was giving the appearance of someone who was, in fact, exceedingly guilty. Oh, it's you. Who are you talking to? Brace face, demanded Tina, leaning into the cubicle now. Myself, said Zoe. I often actually talk to myself whenever I am passing water. Passing what? I'm having a wee. So if you will excuse me, I have to be off to my history class. With that, the little ginger girl tried to ease past Tina and her foot soldiers. Not so fast, said Tina. Me and my gang own these bogs. We sell stolen gear from in here. So unless you want to buy a trainer we nicked, sod off. Don't you mean a pair of trainers? Inquired Zoe. No, I mean a trainer. They only put one out on the shelves, so it's much easier to steal one than two. Hmm, mused Zoe, not sure why anyone with two feet would want to buy just the one shoe. Listen, Ginge, continued the bully, we don't want you in our bogs. You hear? Putting off all the customers by talking to yourself like so nutty. Understood, muttered Zoe. Very sorry, Tina. Now give us your money, demanded Tina. I don't have any, replied Zoe. She wasn't lying. Her dad had been on benefits for years, so she never, ever received pocket money. When she walked to school, she would scour the pavements for coins. One particularly lucky day, she had found a five pound note in a gutter. It was wet, it was dirty, but it was hers. Skipping home in delight, she stopped off at Raji's newsagent and bought a whole box of chocolates to share with her family. However, before Zoe's dad had got home, her stepmother had scoffed every single one, even the dreaded cherry liqueurs, before gobbling down the box too. No money. Likely story, splattered Tina. Splattering is a bit like spluttering, but the person being talked to ends up covered in spit. What do you mean? said Zoe. We both live on the same estate. You know I don't have any cash. Tina scoffed. I bet you get... Pocket money. Always walking around like you own the place. Girls, grab her. Like clockwork, the bullies circled our little heroine. The two goons seized her arms tightly. Ah! Screamed Zoe in pain. Their fingernails were digging into her little arms as Tina's large, dirty hands started rooting in Zoe's pockets. Zoe's heart started pounding. Armitage the rat was lying asleep in the breast pocket of her blazer. Tina's chubby fingers were prodding and poking everywhere. Within seconds, they would come into contact with a small rodent and Zoe's life at school would change forever. Bringing a rat into school was not something you would ever live down. Once a boy, a few years above, had mooned out of the coach window on a school trip to the railway museum. And ever since then, he had only ever been called Hairy Bun by everyone in the school, even the teachers. Time slowed down and then speeded up as Tina's search for money led inevitably to Zoe's breast pocket. Her fingers thrust in and poked poor little Armitage on the nose. What's this? said Tina. The little ginger's got something living in here. Now Armitage must have not taken kindly to being prodded by a big dirty finger on the nose because he bit into it. <laughs> screamed Tina. Her hand shot out of Zoe's pocket, but Armitage was still attached, clinging on with his little sharp teeth dangling from her finger. Uh, 
squeaked the bully. It's a rat!